so today i am going to discuss coexistence and interconnectedness in nature from an ecological perspective so last time i discussed the same topic from scientific perspectives so in the last session uh, we discussed interconnectedness interrelatedness from scientific perspective and uh, during the session we studied theory of relativity we studied implications of the quantum theory then implications from the recent developments in biological sciences then we also studied morphogenetic field theory very interesting theory then holographic perception of the universe so all these theory i discussed in the last session and if i conclude all these topics so conclusion was the relativity and the quantum theory as well as the exploration at subatomic level so all the development in quantum physics and biological science neuro neuroscience all provided enough evidence that there is a deep interconnectedness in this materialistic world in this existence then we studied morphogenetic field theory that indicates pervasiveness and connectivity at subatomic level and at surface level also then holographic view of universe we studied that gives a very unique pattern of wholeness whereby each part tends to manifest the impression of the whole so this was very interesting theory the holographic universe where we studied that each part in each part there is a reflection of the whole existence very interestingly and if i sum up all these topics the outcome was there is a inherent interconnectedness coexistence interrelatedness in this existence so with this now this time i am going to discuss ecological evidences of interconnectedness so before starting the ecological evidences i would like to remind all of you that i am not going to discuss any topic in details you know what i am i am trying to communicate to you that there is a change in a paradigm so during 80s the world view was that everything is independent but after uh, uh, or during this 20th century the studies from various domains are indicating that there is a interconnectedness interdependence so there is a change in a perspective of scientific field also so with this view i discuss the uh, scientific evidences now i am going to discuss the ecological evidences so let's explore we will all together explore this interconnectedness in ecological domain so few things we can easily observe from the perspective of this interconnectedness like this tree so if you observe this tree this tree means tree around you so if you observe this tree so you can see that tree has many leaves and each leaf each leaf has many cells and if you see each cell and it can be easily observed that each cell is contribution contributing in the organization of the leaf and each leaf is contributing in the organization of this tree and each tree is contributing in the organization of the whole ecological system and each and this ecological system like earth is contributing in its solar system and each solar system is contributing in the galaxy and each galaxy is contributing in this whole system of galaxies so this is how interconnectedness is working from an atom to 
whole galaxy. Is it right or not? We can write on chat box. So very easily we can see that interconnectedness is working from atom to the galaxy and galaxies. Right. So everyone is able to see this interconnectedness. This is a common perception. So there is no need to be technical, but with a common observation, we can see that each unit is interconnected. Now, if we try to understand these ecological, uh, these interconnectors from ecological system, from ecological perspective, so we will discuss this ecology first. What is ecology? So ecology is According to ecological system, according to ecologist, ecologist try to understand the interaction of their in interaction of an ecosystem with their organism. It may be biotic or abiotic, but they try to study the behavior of units and environment and their relation. This is the core. Uh, issue which is addressed in ecology. So concept of ecology is that each living organism has a continuous relationship with all the rest that make up its environment. And in uh, if you see an ecological system, so ecological system is made of many ecosystems. An ecosystem is like uh, Suppose there is a place where is a pond, forest, mountain, all these together is known as ecosystem. And many ecosystems are working with each other in a coherent manner, in with a dynamic relationships. And this dynamic relationship is working in a manner that there is an ecological balance everywhere. And as a human being, if we do not understand this dynamic interconnectedness, then our activities may disturb the ecosystems. So that's why there is a need to understand this interconnectedness from ecological perspective also. So let's try to understand this uh, ecological evidences. So we are going to talk about ecological evidences you know, that will show interconnectedness and self-regulation in each unit of this ecological system. So we already studied uh, this ecological system in our, our 10th or 12th in school time that there is a collection of you know, animals, plants, and they are interdependent on each other. Most of the time we have heard about the food chain system. So one species is a food of another species, another species is a food of another species. This is how this food chain works in this ecological system. So this we have already studied, but I am going to discuss some more evidences that will help you to see this interconnectedness in this ecosystem. So first I would like to discuss this trophic cascade. This is an ecological phenomena that shows that there is an inherent interconnectedness, interrelatedness in an ecological system. So let's check. So what is trophic cascade? So with the help of this ecological phenomena, we can understand interconnectedness in various species. So this is a concept which is used in ecological domain. So what ecologists do? Ecologists insert some predators in an ecological system like in a forest. Then they start observing this forest. So they try to understand the relation of this new predators with the environment. And similarly, they remove some predators 
from the forest and they again starting uh, they again start observing the whole ecosystem how this ecosystem is behaving in the absence of those predators so how ecosystem behaves in the present presence of those predators and how this ecosystem behave in the absence of those predators this is studied in this ecological domain it is known as trophic cascade so when ecologists do such experiment you know they observe that these experiments lead to a drastic changes in the structure of an ecosystem and the cyclic process which is happening naturally in any ecosystem so for example there is example uh, two case studies uh, are given here number 1 in the absence of mountain lions in geo national park so some ecologist did this experiment they removes mountain lions from this national park and they start observing the whole forest and that resulted in a decline in the cottonwood trees due to unchecked population of herbivores and consequently these changes in plant communities resulted in an increased stream erosion and a decline in the number of terrestrial and aquatic species including wild flowers butterflies reptiles and amphibians also means when they remove this uh, these lions it starts affecting the whole ecosystem even on their plants even on their reptiles aquatic species everyone every unit were affected from the absence of these lions this they have observed ecologists observed <clears throat> and again after some time when they reintroduced reentered this these lions then they observed that the overall variety of species started enhancing so it is found that the number of native fishes were also higher in the presence of lions than in those without the lions so this is the observation of ecologists so these experiments are done by the ecologist and the outcome is absence or present affect the whole ecosystem so what we can say here we can easily say that there is a deep interconnectedness in each unit of this ecosystem so it may happen that one may not be able to understand the importance of any unit but it is directly or indirectly affecting the whole ecosystem so this is how ecologist study uh, the environment and the population within that environment and interaction between population and the environment similarly another concept we can understand this holistic grazing <clears throat> so this is evolved by alan savery alan savery is uh, an ecologist who you know who is from zimbabwe <clears throat> so he did one experiment very interesting experiment actually he works on desertification desertification means degradation of land so he during his research he found the cause of desertification and in his thesis he mathematically calculated and proposed a solution to this desertification and what was the solution the solution was he argued that the the animals the big animals like elephant rhinoceros they grazed in a larger quantity quantity that's why there is a problem of desertification in forest so he proposed a solution that if we remove these big uh, big animals from the forest then the problem of desertification can be solved this was his solution and his talk is available on tedx very interesting talk so when he proposed this solution to the government the government somehow convinced with his argument with his calculation mathematical calculations models and with the help of government he killed 
टेन थाउजेंड एलिफेंट ऑफ दैट फॉरेस्ट आफ्टर किलिंग दिस टेन थाउजेंड एलिफेंट ही स्टार्टेड ऑब्जर्विंग द फॉरेस्ट बट आफ्टर सम टाइम ही फाउंड दैट द कंडीशन ऑफ द फॉरेस्ट वॉज कंटिन्यूसली डिग्रेडिंग एंड इट वॉज अपोजिट टू हिज थ्योरी बिकॉज अकॉर्डिंग टू हिज थ्योरी द फॉरेस्ट शुड बी रिवाइव बिकॉज ऑफ द एबसेंस ऑफ दिस लार्ज एनिमल्स बिग साइज एनिमल्स बट द रिजल्ट वॉज अपोजिट टू हिज हाइपोथिस तो वेरी सुन ही रियलाइज दैट ही had done something wrong and he accepted this mistake at ted talks and he said the saddest and greatest blunder of my life was killing those animals and interestingly he loved uh, these elephant from his childhood but due to uh, the mathematical result somehow he was convinced that killing these elephants will solve the problem of deforestation after realizing his mistake he tries to find out the solution and the solution that he was found the solution that he found was holistic grazing then the concept of holistic grazing came into the picture so what he does now he uh, makes a group of animals and leave uh, those animals in a land these animals starts grazing in a group and after some time he observed that the whole land was reviving because of this holistic grazing so he started this uh, organization holistic grazing where he now he teaches others how to use this holistic grazing to overcome the problem of desertification and it is surprise and all of us are already know that this holistic grazing concept means grazing in a group of animals is popular in our india you know so so many years people use this concept to revive the land in india but alan sebri has found the same solution after killing 10000 animals so if we conclude this uh, concept so we can say that there is a deep interconnectedness between the species and the environment so only food change is happening this is one part but this is not the end part beyond the food chain things are working so the presence of these animals create a conducive environment for the whole ecosystem so for example the excreta of these animals excreta of lions they work as a antibacteria for plants for trees available in that ecosystem so with food chain there are many things which shows that there is a deep interconnectedness between organisms and their environment so this is another concept which force us to think about the interconnectedness then we can think of another uh, concept this is a book uh, book by barry comner and title is the closing circle so barry comner is an ecologist he wrote this book in 1974 the closing circle and he mentions that the complex relationships and interdependency in ecological system exist and based on this complex relationship and interdependencies he evolved these four laws of ecological system so first is everything is connected to everything else so according to barry comner everything is connected to everything else means the whole ecosystem is like a net net of having multiple knots and if you pull one knot the whole net will come out so he 
put many evi evidences showing that there is a deep interconnectedness in each and every unit of the ecosystem. Second law is everything has to go somewhere. It means there are many cycles which are working in an ecosystem. So outcome of one cycle becomes input of the another cycle. Input of the another cycle work as a input of another cycle. This is how the whole multiple cycles are working in an ecological system. So whatever is being produced in an ecological system is consumed by another cycles of that ecosystem. So this is how whole ecosystem is working. Then third law is everything is always changing. It means because cycles are working, activities are going on. So species, plants, everything is evolving day by day. And, and this evolution is taking place in a manner that somehow it adjusts itself into this environment. And last law is there is no such thing as a free lunch. It means whatever activity we do has an environmental cost. So we have to take care when we perform any activity because each activity is impacting the environment. So this is how he derived four laws after observing this interrelatedness, interdependencies in ecological system. So Komner says that the ecosystem is like a net in which multiple strands connect each knot to another. Such a fabric can withstand collapse better than a state forward unbranched circle of threads, which breaks down as a whole if cut anywhere. It is very important thing. If we disturb any single unit, it impacts the whole ecosystem. This is how the things are interconnected in a deeper manner. Another ecologist, Botkin and Keller, calls this interconnectedness as environmental unity. He calls it environmental unity. So it, it means that nothing can be changed individually. Everything affects everything else. This is proposed by Botkin and Keller and they have given a numerous evidences which shows that if you change one thing, it impacts the whole environment. So if we sum up these two ecologist, theory of these two ecologists, we can say there is a deep interconnectedness in a ecological system and the whole ecological system is like a net and each unit, each knot in this net is affecting the other knots and this is known as environmental unity and this term is given by Botkin and Keller. So this is how whole ecological system is working as per the ecologist very Komner and Botkin and Keller. <clears throat> Next we can see the concept of ecology. This concept. So what is ecology and what deep ecologists say about this environment? I am going to put some formulations. So in 1973, Ernest coined this phrase deep ecology. So deep ecology is a worldview. This is another worldview. So according to this perspective, this worldview, they promote inherent value of all living beings in natural system, regardless of their utility to human beings. It means deep ecologists believe that there are fundamental values which are working under this, uh, which are working uh, at the base of this ecological system. So they promote inherent values. They say it doesn't matter whether this unit seems important to you or not. This unit exists because this unit has as a specific participation in this ecological system. So deep ecologist says that we have to respect each and every unit of this ecological system irrespective 
of their utility to human being. So this is the belief of deep ecologist. And deep ecologist believes and also propagate that nature is not a source of enjoyment that can be exploited up to any extent by human beings. And ethics of deep ecology considers that the survival of species depends on the well-being of the whole. So this is very important conclusion from deep ecologist. They say that survival of any individual species depends on the well-being of the whole. It means whole is good if each and every unit of that environment is good. And each an environment, uh, each unit is good if its environment is good. So we have to work for the wholeness and whole is working for the units, its units. So considering this principle, they offer eight principles to encapsulate this uh, holistic view. So I am not going to describe eight principles here. But the important thing is the interconnection between the whole and the unit is so deeply connected with each other that if you disturb one thing, the whole gets disturbed. This is how the ecologists say. This is what the ecologist bringing out the interconnectedness, coexistence, interrelatedness, and not only interrelatedness between units. They are talking about the interrelatedness between unit and whole and interrelatedness between whole and unit. They are talking in the so deeper manner. So why I am discussing here all these principles? Because I am trying to communicate with you that the perception is shifting. So in earlier session, we discussed scientific evidences there we studied that now perception in scientific domain is shifting from independent to interdependence. And in this ecological domain also, the perception is now shifting and perception is from independent to interdependence, interrelatedness. So the perceptions which are coming out from domain shows that nothing can be understood individually. If you have to understand one unit, you can understand that unit in relationship with their environment. This is how the perceptions are coming from scientific domains. Then it is, it is very surprising. It was also surprising for Darwin. So there is a book of written by Darwin, The Origin of Species. And at the end of the book, this quote is marked, written by Darwin. So when Darwin observed this ecosystem, this nature, interaction between units, and at the last, he is very surprised to see that how different kind of species are working so harmoniously and he is very surprised to know this harmonious alignment among all different variety of species. And he has written, it is interesting to contemplate a tangled bank, clothes with many plants of many kinds, with birds singing on the bushes, with various insects fitting about, and with worms crawling through the damp earth. And to reflect that, these elaborately constructed forms so different from each other and dependent upon each other in so complex a manner have all been produced by laws acting around us. So this is very interesting observation of Darwin, you know, which somehow is not propagated. Then we can move towards next concept and it is also very interesting. Gaia theory. So Gaia theory is uh, given by James Lovelock. So Gaia theory introduces a paradigm shift. 
paradigm shift means uh, up to this slide we were talking about the interconnectedness interrelatedness and uh, this type of uh, principles we discussed but gaia theories is talking about another paradigm shift what is that shift uh, james lovelock says or considers earth as a single self regulated organism composed of all life tightly coupled with the air the ocean and the surface rocks so james lovelock is a space scientist uh, he studied this uh, behavior of this earth from the space for many years and uh, he concluded that the whole earth is working as a self regulated organism where the earth is maintaining a conducive environment for the survival of the other species and survival of the other species and also living and non living things both are included so he says the planet earth apparently exhibits the strange property of keeping itself always fit and comfortable place for living things to inhabit and he has given many uh, scientific evidences to prove this that how this gaia is working means how this earth is working so some evidences are like regulation of earth's temperature so james lovelock uh, says even though the do the luminosity of the sun the earth heat source has increased by 30% since life began almost 4 billion years ago the living system has reacted as a whole to maintain temperatures at level suitable life so this is very interesting uh, evidence given by james lovelock that the intensity of the sun heat is increased by 30% but the earth is regulating itself in a manner that is conducive to survive many species so this earth is self regulating managing by itself this is very interesting thing second evidences second evidence given by lovelock is regulation of salinity in the oceans he says that if you see the oceans the salinity of the sea water is quite tightly self regulated around 3.4% making it conducive to aquatic animals it means there is a 3.4% of salinity level uh, in sea water and if it increases by 1% only many species would be in danger they will not be able to survive if it increases even by 1% but somehow this salinity level is stable now it remains constant approximate 3.4% so it is working in a manner that it is conducive for the aquatic species aquatic animals so this is another example by lovelock next example is constancy of water at sea level so lovelock claims that there are evidences which show that the total volume of water which is approximately 1.2000 million cubic kilometers remains unchanged while the continents formed and deformed sea level uh, sea level and fell the polar ice melted and refroze it is very interesting that the volume of this water at the sea remains unchanged irrespective of glaciers are melting irrespective of many rivers are na uh, coming to this uh, sea but somehow this water volume of water remains constant so these are the few evidences given by lovelock and similar evidences are given in his book which shows that somehow earth is self regulating itself so that survival of the others you know, is maintained so these are the evidences given by uh, lovelock next evidence i can say like cyclicity in nature so i am not going to discuss here because all of us are already know that many cycles are working in nature like weather cycle water cycle nitrogen cycle carbon cycle astronomical cycle 
and all these cycles and sub cycles are working in a coherent manner they are not contradicting each other they are working in a fine manner in such a harmonious manner that a conducive environment for all all is maintained due to these cycles and the interesting thing is they are not contradicting each uh, with each other so from micro to macro many number of cycles are working but they are working in a harmonious and coherent manner even a uh, few days ago i was reading a book of quantum physics and uh, i i read a paragraph where it was mentioned that 36 parameters coincidence in 36 parameters are required for the survival of earth and somehow coexistentially harmoniously these 36 parameters are working with each other and ensuring a conducive environment for the human and other species also so it is very interesting so if i conclude all these evidences you know so we can say that ecological studies clearly bring out the interconnectedness and self regulation aspects even without the agency of human being so this is very important when people study ecological system you know they do not talk about human being they are talking about uh, rest of three orders the gaia theory suggests that planet earth seems to behave as a self regulating mechanism maintaining appropriate conditions for life on earth facilitating human survival and meaningful activities and last we can say with the help of various cycles the essential resources and conditions for life are maintained continuously and these cycles are working dynamically in interdependence so in scientific evidences we saw we discussed the interconnectedness in materialistic world even at subatomic level quantum level now in this domain ecological domain we are studying interconnectedness in rest of three orders excluding human being and in next meeting next session i will be talking about interconnectedness from spiritual evidences and then we will combine all these three evidences and we will see when we include human being and rest of the nature and if human is able to understand this interconnectedness then we can create a society policy production system in coexistential manner so this is all from my side thank you very much so if you have any question i will try to give answer again i am informing you i am not going to discuss technically any of these evidences my purpose is to make you aware about the shifting in perception so perceptions are changing you know so now perceptions which are coming out from various domains show that there is a deeper interconnectedness interrelatedness among each species whether living or non living and if we take care of these interconnectedness we can make a holistic development yes uh, one just um, query is coming to my mind that is as per the theories as you have uh, explained the interconnectedness and existence so how will you um, explain different natural calamities or disasters happening uh, in uh, many places across the globe so uh, from these theories as you have explain the coexistence and interconnectedness and how are is facilitating each and every living uh, non living elements to stay with a uh, with an interconnectedness and coexistence so why this type of natural calamity or disasters happen mm. i mean very good yeah yeah i have understood the question <clears throat> so uh, i mean that how from these theories actually will plan that hmm, right right 
सो भैया आई विल से दैट दी टर्म्स लाइक डिजास्टर है ना एंड डिस्टर्बेंस इज मेड बाई अस एंड इट इज मेड बाई अस ऑल्सो इट इज मेड बाई एट फर्स्ट थिंग एंड सेकेंड थिंग इज दैट we have made all the words human centric not nature centric so volcano is a natural activity which is happening on this earth it is disastrous if i am trying to live near volcano otherwise it is working as per natural laws and this activity of volcano is required to uh Are required to make a balance and uh, under the surface of this earth. So this is a natural process. We define it as a disastrous. We define it as a you know disturbance because we make every definition keeping human being as a center, not nature as a, uh, nature centric definition. This is the issue which I find number one. Number two, if you uh, read this uh, Gaia theory, so James uh, James Lovelock. Uh, the next book of james lovelock is dying gaia means gaia is dying so there is a capability of uh, units of this earth which are maintaining harmony if our activities will disturb beyond their capability then disasters may happen so that's why he proposed human activities under these natural activities but our desire our expectations have become so much that now we are disturbing the somehow disturbing the uh, laws of nature that's why desires desires are very frequent otherwise whatever is happening happening according to natural laws ji bhaiya this is from my side okay thank you so much bhaiya actually that uh, i wanted to know that whether we human being are somehow creating uh disturb to the equilibrium of uh, the universe so that the natural calamities or disasters are uh, coming or appearing so that you have answered and one more thing like as you are mentioning that dying gaia that means the universe is uh, means losing or uh, means the capacity or the capability of means um, holding the entire uh, ecosystem Uh, is it is it reducing day by day? What do you mean by that, Gaia uh, dying Gaia? Ah, uh, dying Gaia means uh, our activities have has our activities have overpowered the abilities of cycles available in nature. For example, for example, production rate on the earth is happening in a natural manner, but if our consumption is more than the production of uh, more than the production of this ecosystem then there will be a disturbance disturbance for us otherwise we cannot destroy the natural laws of this universe the whole universe is working under these natural laws but we can disturb ourselves by disturbing the activities of the nature so dying gaia means now we are overreacting you know uh, with this environment so it is out of its capability of the units that's why he wrote this book uh, dying gaia okay bhaiya thank you so much thank you for answering my queries thank you bhaiya uh, good evening didi and good evening to everyone good evening bhaiya uh, i i have a question with respect to the uh, a talk which was given shared the content so the thing is like we say that uh, everybody is interconnected and we have generally have four orders and when we come on with this human order we are exploiting the nature we are not giving back the right thing to the nature so this is what is going on and we have also heard the news like global warming and other things which says that the temperature of the earth is rising and which is very harmful the sea level is getting raised the uh, 
spices or melting and all, all the things so when i uh, hear or listen this today's lecture where uh, by also said that the earth is regulating itself so when you have a temperature rise all the species all the units in the earth is adjusting to the temperature rise and it's maintaining harmony in such a case i have also heard that the temperature of a normal human being uh, which we when the temperature is above 98.6 we say that as a fever whereas a few years back the particular temperature has been rise to 100.2 so only when a human being is going to have 100.2 or above that is considered as fever so all, all the all these things were interconnected but one question which is uh getting me confused is like if the earth is going to be a self regulating one so won't it be a chance for the humans to be more human centric so whatever i do uh it's because of me i'm getting this global warming and other things so if this earth is going to regulate itself on its own and the species so won't it be a chance for me to exploit the nature more so th this is a question bhaiya i just want to clear it up <laughs> ji didi so we can uh, i can give you analogy like uh, our body our body has a digestion system if you eat in a required quantity that digestion system works properly if you overeat you know if you do overeating eating more and more then up to a certain time this digestion you know will not work so we have to understand that limitation so what is happening we are overreacting with this environment if we act with this environment by understanding this self regulation you know, and the abilities of this self regulation then we can live harmoniously otherwise our activity can our activity will disturb ourselves only otherwise the whole self regulation is working as it is so if temperature rises if floods come everything this is self organized and who is feeling unhappy i am feeling unhappy because i have not understood this self regulation and somehow we are trying to regulate the earth somehow we are trying to regulate the natural system but we are not accepting that self regulation is available number 1 this self regulation is also available in me this we are not understanding if we understand these self regulations number 1 there is a self self regulation in me which we are which we are calling as natural acceptance then there is a self regulation available on this ecosystem also then we can live harmoniously what is happening today we are ignoring our self regulation we are ignoring self regulation available on this ecosystem and absence of these two we are trying to regulate this nature this is the problem okay bhaiya okay thank you so much good morning and uh, good afternoon everyone um bhaiya i um, gave some examples earlier to my students school students uh, when i tried to just talk about coexistence uh, one is that uh, the connection the moon full moon uh, with the tidal waves and another that leaves preparing uh, its food uh, in the presence of sunlight only so are these examples uh, okay for school students to, to show this coexistence that is my question and there is one observation also yes bhaiya yeah so uh, means you want to ask whether these examples are enough or not for a student uh not enough but is it okay because here we are okay. very careful in giving examples also so those i gave on my own but today i have heard you so we, uh, is that okay to give that kind of examples 
yeah so this example is for uh, interconnectedness so yes, moon yes. and earth are interconnected with each other yes even not this uh, ocean and tides even our body is also interconnected with moon yes yes so this is an example of this interconnectedness yes and in this interconnectedness if we see individually we will see this interconnected and we if we see uh, with the perspective of wholeness then we will hmm. see we will be able to see that this relation you know is happening in this coexistence so this interconnectedness is in coexistence hmm so we have also uh, told to student that this is an example of interconnectedness and this hmm. uh, this uh, what we say interaction what is happening between moon and this ocean hmm. interaction is happening with coexistence yes 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 yeah. and uh, one more uh, one observation every morning when i go for a walk uh, recently um, uh, during the uh, world cup hockey the whole city was full stop so the footpaths uh, and and the uh, area which i take the uh, walk around or the footpath i take is, is uh, i take every day that was semi concrete so most of it was like grassy uh, uh, art and then uh, there are trees uh, just uh, along that footpath so um, in those times uh, just maybe 6 months ago also i never felt that the footpaths are dirty but now after the uh, spruce uh, sprucing up of the city uh, huge wide um, concrete uh, footpaths have been created now uh, the trees are there the leaves fall and Uh, and the uh, stray dogs and cows they litter uh, the uh, area so uh, it was done for beautification only for uh, that one month but afterwards nobody is paying attention to so all the leaves fall um, in the season and they remain dirty because there is no uh, absorption by the art all this uh, animal ex uh, excretion and leaves and, and the park nearby it also has uh, tall trees and every monsoon uh, the stormy season the branches will break and then the he hedge and that conch uh, that statue and all it will be uh, it is uh, uh, damaged so when i uh, go through the uh, park and all i all i never uh, i uh, like other people uh, start saying that ye tut gaya wo tut gaya ye hua damage ho gaya but i feel that these big trees they have their own places in the forest and, and this is a natural phenomena as you have mentioned that these are not disasters this is uh, recognition and fulfilling as we say maybe that at uh, at a certain height or maybe that wind uh, because of that it will break but it is us that we have created such kind of structures below it and uh, it had to happen Uh, and the car parking area also it is it has been made concrete and now water is not absorbed so whenever there is rain uh, that car parking area has been con uh, made concrete but the surrounding area it gathers water and then uh, the dry leaves are there um, the rot it gets uh, rotten so whole place becomes dirty and tidy the whole purpose is defeated like suddenly we try to beautify it and after that we leave it to uh, just uh, Uh, just leave it alone and um, this is what human intervention uh, we are doing uh, we are spoiling this kind of uh, ecological balance yes where this is my observation so what is happening is uh, uh, what system we are uh, making is generally contradictory the system made by nature so that's why there is a need to understand this interconnectedness cycles and yes. this interdependence and if of ecological system once we understand these systems by understanding this system when will we will prepare human made system then they will be in harmony otherwise they will contradict with each other yes yes exactly thank you okay. humans depleting the resources in fast manner and violating the ecological system as a part of self regulating mechanism of earth 
how it try to heap or compromise the resource depletion yes so uh, nature is you know self regulating in itself but if your disturbance will be more than the ability of this self regulating self regulation then there will be a contradictions that's why there is a need to understand this uh, interconnectedness and coexistence so it is true that uh, earth is a self regulating organism every unit has a self organization you know but if you don't understand it then the rate the rate at which you are disturbing and rate at which the ecosystem is regulating itself there will be a gap between these two then there will be a problem and if you see naturally if we are trying to mate system according to our natural acceptance then there will be no contradict with natural system what is happening is our expectation our desire are so much preconditioned so much full of expectations that nature you know jo all the ecological system is not able to cope up with your ex human expectations this is the issue only migratory pattern of animals and yes, birds yes. whether it affects the ecosystem that's my question right. right right so as we have studied in uhp that each unit recognizes its relationship with other units that's why these uh, animals birds they recognize their relationship with other ecosystems also so when they migrate to another ecosystem they easily accept it and fulfill it according to natural laws so migration is uh, from what i have understood migration is not a problem neither migration affects the other ecosystem what i understand is when animals or birds migrate one place to another place they become complement to uh, another ecosystem and where they again remigrate they become complement to their previous place so complementary mentality is happening in migration naturally ji ji okay bhai thank you dinosaurs to extinct so whether it's related to the gaia theory uh, earth is self regulating uh, to vanish that animals ji ji have you completed yeah completed sir so didi i would like to say that uh, if you uh, observe this nature keeping only one event at the center then then you won't be able to find a appropriate answer you know so keeping one one event or one unit in center it is difficult to grasp why it was happened but okay. if you keep the whole self regulation whole system whole existence as a coexistence in the center then whatever is happening it is happening in complementarity so this will be a this may be a could be a transition period in transition period uh, you know things may happen differently but from the perspective of the whole system things are working in a complementarity this is my summation didi okay sir thank you thank you so much bhaiya thank you so okay. much for facilitating and helping us to understand more about ecological evidences about interconnectedness and self regulation bhaiya very interesting and eye opener session bhaiya thanks a lot bhaiya thank you didi thank you